And I now have the pleasure of introducing Dr. Rick Zabrowski. I'd like to acknowledge his wife, Rhonda, his daughter, Sarah, and his son, Adam. And somewhere here, it says that these, his mother, and his mother. Sorry about that. Somewhere here, it says that these are the people that keep him grounded. But when I tell you a few things here, they're not doing a very good job. <laughs> Rick was a student at King City from 1969 to 1974. He fondly remembers the students that he associated with and his teachers. He also remembers being part of theater arts and the band. After he graduated, he attended McMaster University for his undergraduate degree in biology. He then headed west to the University of Calgary, where the snow skiing and hang gliding were rumored to be amazing. In 1980, he graduated from medical school. The view of the Rocky Mountains was too difficult to leave behind, and he therefore chose to work, play, and boy did he play, and raise his family in Calgary. Rick has continued to pursue a diverse range of interests since his King City days. He has worked in various medical fields, including emergency, family, and occupational medicine in recent years. He has become more involved in disability and medical legal issues. He also teaches medical students and residents. Rick is currently a clinical assistant professor in the Faculty of Medicine at the University of Calgary and maintains a busy practice as a primary health care provider, occupational health consultant, and disability evaluator. He regularly testifies in court as an expert witness and has published several peer-reviewed medical articles. In addition, he has been a featured speaker, presenter, and organizer for several medical conferences throughout the world. Now here's where the grounding comes in. Outside of the workplace, he enjoys an active life and varied lifestyle including logging several thousand hours in both motorized and non-motorized aircraft. The non-motorized being gliders, and he has his instructor's license in gliding. But it doesn't stop there. He claims he's jumped out of a few airplanes, and he attaches here with a parachute. <laughs> He continues to be an avid cyclist and started playing golf five years ago. Mistake. <laughs> Might be the one thing you don't master. Uh, he also scuba dives, makes wine, and still uses his amateur radio license that he got at the age of 15. Lately, He's come down to earth because he enjoys walking his two retired racing greyhounds in the park. He is kept grounded here by his loving family and the two children that have returned to Ontario for their university education, unlike Rick heading west. And he'd just like to say that the experiences and the enthusiasm that he found at King City here, stayed him well throughout the rest of his life. It's my pleasure to formally induct into the case of distinction Dr. Rick Dabrowski. My theater arts teacher isn't here, but I certainly hope I don't need the microphone. Uh, a special uh, thank you to my mom for coming here from Manitoba, as well as my uh, family. And it's a real thrill and a treat to see so many faces 
that I remember from 30 years ago. I get asked often by many young students what they should take to prepare them to become a doctor if they're interested in being a physician. And the response I give to them often surprises them. I tell them that they should take as many different things as possible. I tell them that learning the basics in science and math is a given, but all the other aspects of what you learn in school can be just as important and sometimes more important. I'm looking at my English teacher here today, and today I can tell you that I use my English skills far more than I ever thought when I'm writing a medical legal report that I know is going to be uh, read very carefully by multiple lawyers. When I did my occupational medicine board exams in the 70s, it so happened that the two people interviewing me were from Quebec. I introduced myself in French. After that beginning, I knew that the rest of the talk was going to go very well. You never know what you're going to do or take that may help you in your, uh, in your life journeys. I have a special thanks to several of the teachers that I see here today who took the time to tell me on several occasions that, you know what, Rick, this isn't good enough you can do better. And those, those uh, encounters at the time, while I was very upset, I think, made me think very carefully that, you know what, they were right. And as a consequence, when I did go on to university, uh, certainly in the science and math, is, math, I found those things very easy. And I thank you for that. I'm very fortunate to say that every day that I go to work, I'm looking forward to what I do. And part of the things that I enjoy the most are continuing to teach. Uh, the experience now, 30 years later, is that I have specialists that I refer to that I recall teaching them how to listen to a chest. <clears throat> and similarly, there is uh, a number of uh, my uh, good friends who went on to be very successful competitive sailplane pilots that I remember teaching them how to fly. So I really do appreciate the the joy that you can have from teaching people. And I thank you for being a role model in many of the things that I went on to pass on to other people in my lives. Thank you. <laughs>